Our first annual National Signing Day special. We went about two hours last week. We'll do about the same tonight. Unless uh, we we give the floor to Dan Rubin and he just doesn't let it go, then we might be here past midnight. Uh, Dan Rubin joining us from BC Eagles uh, to talk Boston College. Dan, how you doing tonight? When you said midnight, you mean midnight West Coast time, right? Not West Coast, (laughs) not East Coast time. Of course I did. You're good for five or six hours alone. I'm doing very well. I, uh, I think it's a good way, good day to be an Eagle. It's a great day to be an Eagle. And uh, that's not just because Steve Adazio decided to be the uh, the most I- impressive tweets of the of the entire signing day. He also produced a very odd video from his office. What was that all about? Did you see that? Salt Bay. Salt Bay. Tw- he twistled the salt. So there's a uh, there's a Turkish guy that, that turned into a meme. Um, with the whole thing with with like this guy like salts and cures meats and Steve Adazio decided to sprinkle the salt like he did at the end of the uh, at the end of the video and he followed that up with a Sopranos video that he released later on in the day so uh, once again uh, he ran off the plug twice last year he's he's doing it again this year and what more could you want it's signing day and the coach is having fun. All right, uh, Dan, it's the 66th rated class in the country, according to 247 Sports, but you can coach them up there at Boston College, unlike anybody in the ACC. So what do you like out of these, uh, these 20 commits? A lot of versatility and a lot of, a lot of staying true to what Boston College does. Uh, they, they had a lot of recruits, 15 of them, from within a five-hour radius of Boston, which I know for the rest of the country they tend to look at it and they say, well, it's New England or New Jersey and, and up into the Northeast. So it's not the type of players that you're going to get down in Texas or down in Florida, which Boston College does have some success getting. They had a couple of recruits coming in from California as well. But they did what they do best, which is get a bunch of guys who are very raw and very good that can be good, but they're not going to get guys who are going to be impact players right away. I think Adazio came out in his press conference and actually said the words, these are not guys we want playing right away. They want to be able to bring them in and coach them up. But we're very happy with some of the names that came in. Um, a couple of names that people maybe don't see. Caleb Stoneburner, whose brother was, I know, a, a big-time player in the college scene. And guys like Tate Haynes, whose dad was Mike Haynes from the uh, old Oakland Raiders and New England Patriots. Guys like Pat Brown, who is his teammate, a pancake-type blocker. And then you get the icing on the cake when you have A.J. Dillon, uh, finally sign the the NLI. Finally get the uh, finally come to Boston College, and he's your four star running back who is already drawing comparisons to his future as being Andre Williams. So it's a good class. It's not going to jump off the stat sheet. It's not going to jump off the paper. But that's perfectly fine by us. Dan, if the class doesn't work out, you bring in the family members. You got a Pro Football Hall of Famer there, and then you got uh, is that uh, Caleb Stoneburner meaning? Jake Stoneburner, who was a tight end at Ohio State, correct? That would be that would be correct. And Caleb Stoneburner actually came in as a uh, he's the number seven recruit wide receiver based out of Ohio. He's uh, I don't think he's as highly touted as his brother was, but uh, you know, hey, he's got the family, he's got the pedigree. So we know that these guys are going to be impact players. You got twenty here. There's probably going to be if we we do the law of averages, there's going to be like eight or ten of these guys are going to be at least role players that are significant and then there's going to be two or three stars at least stars on the team within the team concept so if you could peg one or two guys that you think you need to come through because of personnel losses and and i know that adazio doesn't want these guys playing this year but based on their position or if just flat out based on what you've seen what you've heard think hey this guy could be he could play past his three star ranking or whatever it is Nate Emmer is the uh, is the name to keep an eye on. He's a six foot five, two hundred fifty pound defensive lineman. He played two way in high school. He was an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman. He had seventy five tackles his senior year of high school and had seventeen tackles for losses, eight and a half sacks. He has that kind of big size. But Boston College is also losing guys on the defensive line to begin with, so he's the type of guy who can come in, maybe get some snaps if he decides to play right away. If they decide to play him right away, and tend to work him up. The other guy who I think would be a really interesting prospect is C.J. Lewis, who comes in as the number seven prospect out of Connecticut. He's an athlete, not really sure where he's going to play yet, 
But considering that there is some depth at the wide receiver position, that they can always use more athletes there, maybe convert them. They lost some guys in the secondary. He's a big kid. He's six foot four, two hundred pounds. I'd like to see where they can use him. Maybe as a safety, maybe as a as a uh, as a stretch receiver who can come in and maybe make an impact right away. Those are some names that I think are uh, are going to be pretty interesting. All right, Dan Rubin, always supplying us with Boston College football knowledge. Uh, join him at bceagles.com, or if you're in the Northeast, a hockey rink at near you. And uh, <laughs> on Sunday, I'm just going to throw this out there where we are totally torn at Boston College. Do you root for the Patriots? Do you root for Matt Ryan? I don't know what to do. I'm probably rooting for the Patriots. Yeah, I, I think you're you're a little bit more than probably rooting for the Patriots. I don't think it's that much of a dilemma. I don't no, think the ties to Matt bit. Ryan are that strong. I know that if he was playing anybody else on the face of the planet, uh, it would be a Matt Ryan camp. But that this is the one exception. Well, I'll, I'll leave you. I'll leave you with this, Mark. That I have yet to meet a person at Boston College, coaches, administrators, staff members, who have said a bad thing about Matt Ryan. There's not a single person. Who can say a bad thing about him? So if uh, if the Patriots have to have to struggle against somebody, I'm not going to say lose because we all know they're not going to. Um, but if they're going to struggle against somebody, I'd rather it be Matt Ryan. Okay, they might start saying bad things about Matt Ryan if he throws the game-winning touchdown pass in the in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. <laughs> Very much a fact. <laughs> all right, Dan, it's good to see you. Have a good night. Talk to you soon, Mark.